I'm alive! <laughs> Hi everybody, it's a vlog in my car going for a drive. Uh, to run errands. It is Saturday and um, don't you hate it when your underwire pokes you in the under boob, under your armpit? Your side boob, not your under boob. Your side boob over here and your underwire just goes, Pff. how's that a good way? Is that a good way to start a video? Asking for a friend. The friend is me. I'm my own friend because nobody else wants me. Wow, this is the weirdest 33 seconds of any of my videos ever opening. I am a, ah, what is this bra stealing me? I think it's telling me I need to go buy new bras. I do, I hate bras. FYI, I hate bras with a passion. They're created by, I don't want to say Satan because I think Satan would be supportive, <laughs> supportive, see what I did there, of the boobies and want to help them because, you know, if you're supportive of the boobies and you're putting them out there, you're being good to those girls, you might be a bad girl and you might be going where Satan wants you. So is Satan a supporter of bras? I would think so. He's like, put those puppies out there, creates, create some sin, you know, bring on the sin. <laughs> okay. It's now the weirdest minute and 24 seconds. Have I gotten way too much sleep this week? Yes, I have. So let me tell you what's been going on. And <clears throat> I have my big water, my Jeep cup, and my big water, and here it is. And we are going for a drive to run some errands because my house is falling apart. My life is falling apart. Everything's falling apart, except my Jeep. My Jeep is good, aren't you, girl? Beep, beep. She says, yes, I'm good. Moxie is good. Moxie is well. Moxie is happy because, okay, let's rewind. How far back should I go? <clears throat> so I think the last time I put something up was, other than a couple of shorts, was I was in Michigan and I did the long overdue Fred Bell. Oh, by the way, welcome to my channel, yada, yada, yada. Apparently now I'm an unironic vlog channel because I never have time to freaking do makeup or unboxings or reviews or opening anything. So welcome to my unironic vlog channel. What is that? Oh, Jeep wave. What is that in my camera? It's so weird. See that like oh, on that side, the light? I don't know what that's doing. Oh, it's the window. The, I had the little corner of the window. It's looking weird. All right, so I'm, dri <laughs> I'm driving down my road. Uh, once I stop driving down the road, actually, I'm not gonna look at you a lot. It's raining, it's very windy, so I will not be looking in the camera much unless I'm at a stop or at a light because it is Saturday. It is 444. That's one of those angel numbers, isn't it? If you know what 444 angel number means, leave it in the comments below. Uh, so yeah, it's 444 Saturday afternoon. I am not editing this vlog unless I swear too much driving, but I'm gonna try not to. I'm trying to calm blue ocean myself into oblivion because I have had the most messed up couple of weeks since I got back from Michigan. So for those of you who don't know, I am Mayor. I am doing another Jeep vlog. Guy behind me is annoyed because I'm only going two miles an hour over the speed limit on my road and too bad, so sad for them. It is raining and it's crazy. I'm gonna do what I want. Plus, I love my Jeep. I don't wanna be in an accident. I don't want to hit a deer. Uh, for those of you, again, who don't know, I live in a mountain, up a mountain, which you can tell I'm, I'm going downhill. Live up a mountain in the middle of nowhere. And it is really the middle of nowhere. I realized when I started this vlog, I'm like, didn't I do another vlog where I drove you guys around and the camera was facing out? And guess what? I did. I, In fact, I think I did that vlog either... So when I get back from Michigan or before I left. Either way, I have a vlog sitting in my editor that I completely forgot about. So in that vlog, I'm putting this up at the top before you leave. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave. Trust me, we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Um, driving vlog. So I did a vlog where I had the camera facing out and I went into town and I drove through town and then I drove home like the back way, which is really, really scenic and it's really pretty. And you go over these, there's like, I don't know, it's really, it is kind of hard to see in a way. It's not like the easiest thing to see in the video, but 
because it's looking out my window. I really need to get a GoPro and point it out the window. But then if I do the GoPro, I'll probably have to do some kind of voiceover thing, which is a lot of work. Holy crap. We are in the midst of this, like up to four inches of rain today and over the weekend. And this pond over here is flooding. There's ponds where there shouldn't be ponds. It's crazy. Crazy. I need a coffee. No, I don't. Listen to me. I want to say thank you up front. Peter Mon gave me a shout out on his vlog channel. Hi, Peter. You're not watching this, but I don't care. Um, he gave me a shout out on his vlog channel because I send him goofy stuff in DMs all the time on Instagram. Sometimes it's drama related stuff, but usually it's just little memes and um, either cute things or memes or sometimes cute animals, mostly quotes, like quotes that I think he would like. And uh, if you know Peter Mon, you been, know he's been going through some stuff for a while now and a couple of years and I'm not gonna go into it because that's his story. And I don't want to talk about it because I respect each other's, each other's, I respect other people's stories and you should go watch his vlogs if you want to. And if you know about him, cool. Um, he's, he's a crazy guy. He's a Gen Xer like me. He's a little bit younger than me and he's been around for a while. And it's so funny cause he's like, I've been doing my channels for eight years. And I just realized two weeks ago, uh, wait, two weeks ago, no, uh, this past Tuesday. Or was it the Tuesday before? Oh my God. I'm trying to remember when it was. I think it was March 15th. Um, anyway, uh, March 9th, no, 9th, 15th. Anyway, I completely missed the 15 year anniversary of when I signed up for YouTube and started my channel. 15 years, guys, 15. And this is all I have to show for it. You know what? It's more than most people do. I mean, in a lifetime, who does this? Like, who uploads and puts their life out there. It's not the easiest thing to do and it's crazy. And sometimes I'm like, why do I do this? I guess maybe someday I already have a whole, I have 10 nieces and nephews and now they are all having the babies and they all have babies right now, babies and toddlers mostly. So I have a bunch of nieces and nephews that are, some of them are on the, like their second kids. And it's like, what are you guys doing? Stop. The world is on fire. Um, climate change, yada, yada, blah, blah. Why are you bringing children into this world? It's frightening. I got to give them credit. I would be terrified. I would not bring a baby into this world. I never wanted to have kids anyway. Neither did my husband. We are dog parents and chicken and duck moms and dads and a rescue animal family. So we do that. We never wanted human kids, which luckily I wisely talked about with my hubby, like right when I met him. And we were like, do you want kids? No. Do you want kids? No. Awesome. Let's keep going with this, which is so important to talk about when you are, I met him. What? Thir yeah. When I was like 30 ish, we, this will be 24 years that we're together. Wait, so 24 and I'm 50. Is that right? The math ain't math. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong with the math. I'm like sitting here going, wait, we've been together 24 years and I met him when I was, no, did I meet him at 30, 40, 50? Huh. Yeah, that's right. Because it'll be 24 years, but not until like this summer. But I think I either met him right when I was turning 30 or just after something like that. I don't know how to do math. Don't ask. Anyway, I met him in the year 2000 <laughs> and I turned 55 this year. So is that right? Yeah. Maybe I was 29. I don't know. Who cares? Or 31. Who cares? My point is when you're anywhere around going into your 30s, if you're getting in a relationship and not upfront going, Hey, how do you feel about kids? Then you're doing it wrong. Do not derail the relationship before it starts by not having this discussion. Just saying, just telling you, just saying for the life of me, I don't know why I went this way, but you know, screw it. This is the way we're going. I was going to take the little back roads, but well, you know what? Now we are, cause this light just changed. I'm not waiting. We're going to go this way. This is so funny. I'm going the most, you don't know where I'm driving to, but this is the most messed up way. I just went way out of my way to come all the way back around, but then it gives me longer to talk to you. So all I'm saying is on that point, uh, if you are in your thirties and you are dating someone new or you're out there, or even like if you're in your twenties, like have that discussion, 
there is nothing worse than investing in a relationship and putting all that time and energy in and then going, what do you mean you don't want kids? Like, just don't. And don't ever try to force the other person to change their mind because that's just sick and wrong and it ain't going to happen. And it's not going to be a happy family. And you are setting your kid, your future kid up for having one parent that never really wanted that kid and just kind of went along with it because maybe they were given an ultimatum or some shit. So don't ever be that guy. Okay, I'm done talking about that. <laughs> um, where was I going with all this? Hi, Peter. <laughs> I am like super ADD all over the place today. And no, I don't have ADD. I have, I've been in bed all week, brain. That's what is wrong. Uh, my brain is on overload right now because I went to Michigan and then I came back and I was gone for like six six days, seven days. It was a while. Uh, and I did take Casper with me. I put a couple of shorts up and there's a lot of pictures on my Instagram. So we were in Michigan longer than I thought we were gonna be. Well, I left on a Thursday and I got back on a Tuesday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, six days. So, and two of those days were kind of driving. So anyway, um, yeah, a lot of driving. It was really fun because I took Casper to meet my dad. My dad is 94 and he kept saying, can you do me a favor when you come out? If you can, can you bring Casper? I really want to meet him because ever since we got, oh, Casper, by the way, if you're new or like, who is this person? I am an Italian Greyhound person. We have, my husband and I have been involved in Italian Greyhound rescue. We we're foster parents. We adopted all of ours except for like two of them out of all the ones we've had. And it's been a lot. Uh, we fostered a bunch of them. We did, um, I used to do home visits for the IGRF back in Michigan, which is the Italian Greyhound Rescue Fund, our IGCA, um, Italian, Re <laughs> Italian Greyhound Rescue Club of America. I used to volunteer with them. Anyway, so been in the breed since our first one came to us in March of 2001. That's how long I've been into Iggy. So almost as long as my husband and my husband got me my first Italian Greyhound. Her name was Velocity. Velocity was the queen. Everybody loved Velocity. She was the queen. She will always be the queen. And forever the queen. Because she was my first one. The first one I had since she was a puppy. Uh, after that, it was all rescues. For all these years, up until November of 2023 when Casper came to live with us. And Casper is a puppy who was born deaf. And I specifically, my husband and I do not traditionally, like we never bring in a dog who's normal, normal. Uh, we like we like the oddballs, we like the weirdos, we like the slightly irregular dogs. If your dog is missing a leg, an eye, an ear, a tail, uh, deaf, blind, any other issues, um, I've had uh, epileptic Italian greyhounds. I've had um, ones that have needed serious surgeries. Tippy, who was my first foster slash foster fail slash adoption, had a liver shunt and we spent $5,000 getting her liver shunt fixed. And that's a lot of money now, but back in 2002, I think it was, 2002 or three when she had that surgery, that was a fortune. And my sweet dad, who like I said, is now 94 back then, went to the hospital she was at, gave them a thousand dollar check because my husband was considering like, we might have to sell one of our cars to pay for her surgery because we were so broke back then. Um, and that was a lot. That was, you know, like you, you save up money. Like we knew, you know, broken leg, you know, whatever. We had a care credit card. We had, we were covered for most things, but the liver shunt surgery was, it was well over $5,000. That was just for the, not even just for the surgery. It was more than that. And it was a lot of doctor visits before then. She had to see internal medicine doctors. She had to go to emergency when we, she first got sick. So it was probably all together. We probably spent, you know, between seven and $8,000 on her with all the repairs that needed to be made. Um, so, and she is the one who is right here. That's tippy toes. That's my heart girl, queen of my heart forever right there. And, um, a lot of who I am today is because of her. And someday I'll talk about that, but not right now. Cause I'm driving and I don't want to cry. Uh, I need a drink of water. My throat's getting dry. Mm. 
So anyway, Casper came to live with us last November. I had reached out to my friend who I repped under. She was the rescue rep for um, my area of Michigan. And I reached out to her and I said, hey, I think I'm gonna go this way. I said, hey, um, do you, there's no Iggy's in rescue. Like literally now they're, they're falling out of the sky again. Now there's like a ton of them in rescue again. But last year when I was looking, there were like none, which is a good thing. You like when it's a purebred rescue and there's like none to be had. That means they're flying under the radar. People aren't like, oh, I need an Italian Greyhound because I don't want to go off on a tangent, but just go read about what's happening since French Bulldogs were named as the number one most popular dog again. They're getting, the, the breeding is horrible. The breeding goes downhill because all these terrible breeders come out of the woodwork. They're breeding health problems into them. Then people are turning them over to rescues because they can't deal with them. They're not researching the breed. They're like, oh, they're popular and they're cute. And I saw them on the TikToks. I'm gonna get one and they do no breed research. Ugh. Um, shout out to Adam McIntyre who does know all about Frenchies and did his research and also has a friend for his. Um, Shout out to uh, Dolly and uh, Bonnie. Anyway, so people just, you know, they see that a dog breed's popular and they don't do their breed research and maybe that dog breed isn't for them. They can't handle the energy level. Like Frenchies have a lot of energy, guys. Even though they have the snorty, you know, they're like snorty and they have trouble breathing and they basically sound like me when I run. Um, they do have energy. There's a Frenchie that comes to the dog park where I take Casper. And that Frenchie was giving Casper a run for his money. And he's a freaking eight month old Italian Greyhound. So it was crazy. It was so cool to see a Frenchie run like that. Although they slow down real fast and they end up going. <laughs> and that was the actual sound I was making. <clears throat> if you've kept up so far and your head isn't spinning from trying to keep up with every changing topic, congratulations. Tree tricks. Um, oh my God. I'm getting into town and the sun's out. Oh, sun. So Casper is eight months old. We got him last year because I reached out to my friend Melissa and I said, hey, do you know of anybody, like even a breeder, anybody who has maybe a special needs Iggy that is looking for a home? Because my husband was just, I couldn't deal with it anymore after we lost Trudy, Rusty and then Trudy. I, in all my years of being with him, I've never seen him go so sad. He was so sad. It's nothing really made him smile or laugh anymore. And it was just, it was sad, you guys. I just couldn't deal with it. I was like, it, it's breaking my heart to see him like this. And even though we had talked about it, we're like, he's like, oh, I want to get a, a Spanish Galgo, a, which is a Spanish Greyhound. And they are used as hunting dogs in Spain. And then people just like throw them away. They set them loose out in the mountains there and all kinds of bad things happen to them. We have followed the plight of the Galgos since the early 2000s, and we've always wanted to adopt one. The problem is we're not really in a place to have like a big dog right now because we don't have a fenced yard. I mean, we could take them to the dog park, but it's, you know, our little ones we can take to the dog park and we go, and, we'll, and three of our four, like won't go, they don't wanna walk, they don't wanna run. They don't wanna do any of that. Two of them are blind, <laughs> the other one, is Eliza, who is afraid of the wind when it blows because she's a puppy mill rescue. So Casper is the only one that really needs the exercise and that's why I take him to the dog park all the time now. Holy crap, it is really flooded in town. Oh girl, we got some flooding going on. It's not on the road, so that's good. Anyway, uh, Casper. So yeah, I just asked, hey, is there any Italian greyhounds looking for a home? Well, it was kind of the best of both worlds because I really wanted an all-white Italian Greyhound. I love the all-white ones. My friend Sarah, Sarah's probably not watching, but hi Sarah, my uh, BFF forever in Michigan. Also, probably one of the first people who called me Mayor and consistently called me Mayor. And my name is Nightmare. Mayor is kind of a shout out to my friends back in Michigan, all my Iggy friends who knew me as Mayor, which was kind of funny. Sue and Val and Sarah, all my Italian Greyhound mom friends. We used to have play dates together with our dogs. I miss those days. I miss that. Those were serious good times. Uh, but anyway, um, Sarah was like, oh my God, I can't believe you want an all white Iggy. You know the health problems they have. I'm like, yes, yes. 
I, that, that, I know, but hello, our house is a dog. It's, it is the home for wayward, messed up, <laughs> developmentally, <laughs> uh, emotionally, or physically challenged dogs. I mean, Eliza was a puppy mill rescue, was terrified of everything. When she came to us, she was feral. Lydia was born with no eyes. Luna is a whole other story who she came to us just, she's a walking list of issues from bad breeding, but we absolutely love them. And my husband and I always say, we never take in a dog because we want or need a dog. We take in a dog that needs us and a dog that can use what we have to offer as a family, which is, I can't believe that I have been a dog trainer and dog groomer as long as I have. I finally have my own little like salon and I just groom like friends, dogs and friends of friends. And that's it. I'm not, I don't advertise. It's like word of mouth. I don't make a big deal out of it. And I just have a very small clientele. And I'm really happy with that. I'm not trying to make my retirement dog grooming, but I became a dog groomer and trainer like 12, 12 or 13. I think it's going on 13 years this year or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, I pulled out my my certificates and I put them up in my grooming salon. Finally, I never like, I, I always feel like, Ooh, let's put our certificate up, but I did. And I mean, it's kind of cool. It's a little shout out to, Oh my God. You know, I put in a lot of work at grooming Academy and a lot of hours and a lot of studying. And I'm lucky I had a really amazing teacher who was just, she was so incredible. I absolutely love my um, grooming Academy teacher. She kind of took me under her wing and I think we we just fell in love as soon as she said, I said, oh my God, I love poodles. I'm obsessed with them. And she said, oh, I have a poodle. And then we just bonded over poodles. So that was the thing that did it. Oh, by the way, I'm on my way to Aldi in town, in case you're wondering. I have to go to, I'm probably going to go to two grocery stores, which is crazy. But Aldi doesn't always have everything I need, but they have some stuff I want. So I'm going to go to Aldi and then I'm going to stop in town and then I have to go to Sally Beauty Supply and get some bleach for this hot mess. And then I'm probably going to go to Giant, which is another, like, it is a giant grocery store. It's, like, humongous. If you're in the Midwest, it's like Myers without the clothes and all the extra stuff. It's, like, it's not quite as big as a Myers, but it's pretty freaking big. The one that I go to, it's humongous. It's a good workout just walking around Giant. But I love it because they have, like, an entire... Um, organic, healthy food area, which I'm trying to stick to. Uh, let's see what else, what else, what else? So yeah, with, I, you know, I did, I do all positive reinforcement training. That's how I was trained. If you ever watch it's me or I think it's called it's me or the dog or so it's Victoria Stillwell was my hero back then, back in like 2012 or whenever I, I think it's 2011 or 20. No, it was before that. Shit, it was 12 years. Yeah. It was a little bit before that. I started watching her. But I loved Victoria Stilwell because she was the opposite of Caesar Milan. Caesar Milan was like, you got to put a dog in their place in Alpha and knock them down and blah, blah, blah. And Victoria Stilwell's like, well, that's a load of crap. Um, and the way that I always learned was you reward the good and you ignore the bad. And that's that's it in a nutshell of positive reinforcement training. We're not going into that right now. Anyway. But I have a lot of experience in all of this, which is why I tend to always want to take in and adopt special needs dogs because, you know, that's like what my um, specialty is, for lack of a better description. Uh, my specialty is dogs that are special needs. I work with a lot of fearful dogs, dogs that I, they consider unadoptable. A bunch of my dogs that I have uh, had have been um, labeled unadoptable by certain places. That doesn't mean they're not ever going to be adopted, but it could mean they're going to be there for a very, very, very long time. Where are my Aldi bags? Oh my God. Don't tell me I forgot to put them in the car. I, I packed all my other bags. This is, look, it's, I'm wearing my running stuff. This is from the, um, three days at the fair, which is an ultra marathon I did. And this is from the river ramble, which was my first 10k I ever did in my life but I'm trying to find my Aldi bags. I don't know where they are. I'll find them when I'm done with this. Anyway, uh, okay, where are we? Um, going into Aldi and trying to remember all the stuff I gotta get. I have a list and it has two things on it. On a post-it. Coffee creamer, saltines. 
I need a lot more than that, but I just, I don't know what I'm getting exactly. I'm just going for fruits, vegetables, healthy stuff and whatnot. Um, hmm. So I was saying Casper, um, I heard about him, Deaf Iggy, looking for a home. Definitely had to be uh, from, <laughs> there's a guy waving at me, hold on. Oh my God, you guys, this guy was walking by and he saw, um, hold on. Okay, so all my ducks are in here and uh, I now have the duck landing, the place duck here on my Jeep. And this, he's walking right there. He's so sweet, he's carrying some groceries. Anyway, this is, I love my town. My town has some kooky people in it, but they're very unique. And this guy was so cute. Hold on, I'm gonna flip my camera on. Okay, so he comes over and I, you know, it's like he was kind of waving and smiling, missing like most of his teeth. Um, uh, how can, I'm gonna say this like very gently and very kindly, um, maybe um, a little mentally um, challenged on the spectrum, something like that. And like, but so sweet. He was so nice. He came over and he was kind of giggling. He said, oh, I saw your ducks. And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, I have a duck and um, I have a duck and I put it in a cup of water and I put it in my cup holder and I put the cup in my cup holder with the duck swimming in it. So he was telling me like, you know, to take like my Jeep ducks and put them in a cup of water because it'd be funny. And it was just like cute. It was like wholesome. It was very cute. He wasn't weird. He wasn't a creeper. It was nothing like that. I'm like, why does this guy want to talk to me? But I got to say, um, this happens a lot because I have a giant bright purple Jeep and it has stickers and stuff. It has, her name is Mad Moxie. There's stickers on the front. My steering wheel is purple. It's really let's just say it's pimped out okay very pimped out jeep and it's got all kinds of aftermarket stuff on it and so it attracts a lot of attention and a lot of people come up to my car and talk to me because of my jeep so that's fine i don't mind and everything is like coordinated <laughs> where was i oh my god casper I'm never going to finish the story. I got to go in Aldi. Anyway, long story short, my dad wanted to meet Casper. I took Casper to my dad's to meet him for a week. On the way there, we picked up my niece, Mads, who went with me to Michigan and helped dog sit Casper because I was also dog sitting my friend Jamie's pit bull, Coco, and house sitting for him while he was out of town. But when I do that, some of you know, I go to Michigan and I watch Jamie's house and his dog. And I also get to see my dad because my dad only lives like nine minutes from there, which is awesome. And that's the fastest I've ever told a story. Okay. I'm going into Aldi and then I'll come back out and we'll chit chat about what happened after I got back from Michigan. Cause it's been a challenge since I got back. I got back from Michigan. And it's been a huge challenge ever since. Okay. I will be back. I'm going shopping. Um, I don't know if I'm going to film in Aldi cause I just, I don't want to waste time. It's getting late. And I want to get home before it gets dark. And I have like two or three more places to stop. So I may not, I probably won't film in there, but I'll see you shortly. Bye. Uh, oh, I got, do I have my quarters? I do. I have my quarters. I have my little, um, my little quarter thing. Ugh. Oh my God. And it's stuck. Look at the glowy skin. Okay. I use this drunk elephant stuff on my cheeks that I never use. It's like that rouge stuff. It's like a skincare rougey thing. And I got a little sample and I put it on my cheeks. So I have like this little glow. Cute. And I just have lip balm on. There it is. It says pause off and it's to hold quarters and it's got a little clip and it's for your Aldi quarters. Or it's also pause off because I need this when I go into town and I need it for the meter. Anyway, this is from my dear, dear friend who does Shaka Dog Hawaii, and I've talked about her before. This is not sponsored, but there is so much Shaka Dog stuff. This is the Jeep she made me when I got my purple Jeep. Lori made me this. She is a awesome friend of mine. She also sent me the purple houndy head to go in my Jeep. There we go with the tongue sticking out. My purple Italian Greyhound houndy head. And she makes these too. She makes all kinds of cute stuff. If you're looking for like the coolest freaking most unique gifts ever, um, go to Shaka Dog Hawaii. I'll try to remember to put it in the description. In case I don't, it's S-H-A-K-A-D-O-G Hawaii, the state. And yes, she is in fact in Hawaii. And um, I have known her since about 2002 or so. And 
it's really crazy because I knew her before she started her business and I've supported her ever since. And she always just sends me little gifts like this. If you remember, she sent me the Casper houndy head that she made that looked just like him. That was in a video. And it was so cute because it's all white. And she actually did the blue eyes and got the markings and everything perfect. It was so cool. Okay. And yeah, now I do really need to go in. But uh, yeah, I got my quarters. Uh, here's my keys. Put my keys in my pocket. And then I got to go look in the back of the Jeep and see if my Aldi bags are back there. Otherwise, I'll be using non-Aldi bags today, which I don't care. Whatever. I'm not getting that much here. Aldi has, they don't have a ton of stuff I get, but they have enough. Like, I come for the produce because it's so much cheaper than all the other grocery stores around here. That's the main reason I come here is the produce. And, oh, my God, I got to get to Sally's. Look at these roots. Oh, okay. Right from here, we're going to Sally's. Maybe hitting Dunkin' and getting coffee, though. But when I get out of all these, we'll talk about, I'm only going to have a little bit of time before I get to my next places, but we'll talk about like what happened after Michigan because what a journey. And look, my little, my little um, thingies are doing flips today. <laughs> what is this? I look like little Cindy Lou Who. All right, I'm out of here. I'll see you soon. Woo! Oh my God. That was like a crazy shopping extravaganza at Aldi. I went as fast as I could and it is still getting late. So oh my God, there was like so much to look at, but I really, oh, holy crap, there's tons of trees down. We've had like really high winds and rain a lot in the last couple of weeks. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's getting late. I have to hurry and get my shopping done and everything and get home. I really got to get to Sally's right now. And look at the sun coming in my window crazy oh my god there's blue sky and sun i love it oh, thank you son all the dark clouds are that way it looks like this rain has moved out now that does not mean it's raining not still raining at my house and cloudy because when you live around mountains there's very weird weather like there will be lovely sunny the roads are like dry in town i'll go up my road and it'll be just a complete disaster raining storming whatever you never know it's hard to say around here. Anyway, um, I got lots of healthy stuff at Aldi. Mostly I went there for the fruit and veg because their prices are so good. And I remember, again, Peter Mon bringing him up. He mentioned like he doesn't understand like why everyone loves Aldi so much. But I also don't think Peter Mon is a huge fruit and veg guy. Uh, he's trying to be. I know he's trying to lose weight. And he was saying he's a sucker for dips. And I do have to say Aldi, got to tell you, Peter, Aldi has some of the best dips ever anywhere. But they're, they have this cheese dip that I love. And of course, today they didn't have it. But I got two other dips that I'm going to try. Anyway, I got crackers. I got a bunch of hummus. I got the hummus. I got my husband's berries and yogurt. <clears throat> and he likes these little, they're called Brecky. It's B-R-E-K-I though. It's like this Brecky. It's Brecky. Uh, they're these little cups in their overnight oatmeal cups. And I get them the blueberry ones. They only had the blueberry. They had different flavors, but they only had the blueberry right now. So I'm like, well, I guess he's getting the blueberry. What are you going to do? So he got the blueberry. That's what he got. <laughs> Okay, do I want to deal with this light? No, I do not. I am going my little secret back way here, which is also completely flooded and full of potholes. I hate that light up there. I hate, oh, I hate this light. Anyway, I like to bypass that whole area. So I go through this extremely flooded, messed up pothole area so I can avoid it. And then I just go through this light right here and all those people are still waiting over there. See what I did there? No, you didn't. Anyway, it's a little shortcut that I love through my time. So next I am going to get to Sally's in a second. This is a crazy one way people come flying. We're all clear. Okay. Woo. So I wanted to avoid, sorry about the sun in my window. It is, I'm not going to, no, not sorry about the sun in my window. It has been gray and crappy out and shitty. Okay. For days it's just been crappy so i was saying i have like five minutes until i get to my next destination probably not even five minutes so i will say really quickly 
can I tell this story like the one before I went in Aldi? So I go to Michigan. I pick up Mads. We stay in Michigan from, we get there Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, I say, I have a bad feeling like we shouldn't go back tomorrow. I don't know why, but I just feel like in my gut. I had said goodbye to my dad already. I go back to my dad's house that evening and I go, dad, two things. I forgot to take the picture of us together. We always take a picture together and he puts his arm around me and we always take a picture together. And I go, I feel like it's bad luck if we don't take that picture. I need to get a picture of you with your arm around me because it's just a thing. And I do that every time I see my dad because he's 94 and I never know which one's gonna be the last picture and it scares me. I always have to um, make sure I get that picture before I go and I couldn't believe I forgot. So, uh oh, this is bad, guys. You know how I said there's high wind everywhere? Well, the traffic light's out. The traffic light here is out. This is supposed to be treated as a four way stop. Is anyone going to do that? Okay. No, I was just talking about the winds and I was worried about this. So, Home Goods and Sally's and everything, I think their power is all out because the light is out right there the light is out that goes to the Walmart and the Giant and yep the lights are all off in Home Goods. Oh there's some lights on they might be emergency lights in there. Is Sally open? It looks like all the light oh my god you guys the lights are out everywhere. Oh no. Oh well this really sucks this really really sucks. I was gonna surprise my husband and stop at our favorite little Chinese place. Oh, yep, it's uh, notice closed due to emergency. They just put a sign on the liquor store that says closed due to emergency, which means all the power is out. So I cannot go to Giant. So thank God I went to Aldi, huh? Okay, this looks like this light is out as well. So silly me. Okay, that light up there is working. It looks like this light's working, but I can't tell. Nobody is, nobody's coming this way, so I'm going to go this way. Oh my god, this is crazy. Well, it looks like a big storm just went through, so all the lights are out around here. But the light over there is on, so this side, everything's working. So I went all the way to Giant and Sally's, and everything's closed because the power's out. Thank god I went to all these first, huh? Ooh, or I could have been in Giant shopping. Okay, here's the worst thing. Like you're shopping and they're ringing all your stuff up and the power goes out. I actually had that happen once where I was out doing my shopping, minding my business, doing my thing, doing all the stuff. And then I'm shopping and the power goes out and we're like, what are we supposed to do? And it was crazy. Okay, so over here on Crystal Street and going up Main Street this way, these lights are on. So it's that whole area over there is all shut down full business. Holy crap a moly. That is crazy. Oh, people are pissed. There was a crowd gathering outside the liquor store. <laughs> we have a liquor store that is um, right by Giant. It's between Giant and Sally's. So between Giant and Sally's, the liquor store, it just closed due to emergency and it's locked up and there's the guard is standing outside because he's probably telling people, look, you know, clearly there's no power. I don't know how people could not notice that when the light is not working and it's all messed up. And uh, it's really weird because the light just before Giant was working, but everything else isn't working. But I am, I am not even going to go in Giant and see. I wasn't even about to go. I'll go tomorrow morning. It's fine. It sucks. I got to go back out. But you know what? I got all this Aldi food and... It is what it is. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need. I could go to the Wise grocery store that's up here. I I really wanted to go to Giant specifically because there's things I'm looking for that I think they would have that other place doesn't. But uh, I'm going to order a coffee, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm trying not to get blinded because look what happens. Ah! <laughs> oh, God. The sun is like, hello. Uh, I just used my Duncan app really quick. I pulled over, did my Duncan app, and I ordered a short king because I'm a short king. <laughs> uh, oh my God, that's kind of annoying. You know, I really wanted to bleach my hair, but I can't really do it anyway until like Sunday night or Monday. So hopefully the power will come back on. I'll try going tomorrow. And I think I'm just going to go to the Wise Market over there. Okay, hold on. I just got to get my coffee. I'm not stopping this. 
or maybe I will. And I remembered, I always tip them. I hate that you order on the app and you can't add a tip. So I always have to make sure I have money for a tip when I do a mobile because it annoys me that my charger's all over the place here. Let's plug this in. All right. So I'm going to go to the Wise Market that's right up here because I know the power will be on there. They might be busier because Giant is, I'm sure, shut down with everything. I'm sure all the, I mean, I could probably pay with cash, but hi. Thank you. Uh, and that's for you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Coffee acquired. Because, uh, yeah, I just got a short king because it's 611 in the evening and I love that it's still light out but uh, I don't want to be up like all night pizza steaks pasta why does pizza sound good okay so I was at Aldi and I got like the greatest thing ever I got a breakfast pizza with a biscuit crust my husband is gonna freak out because that is I saw it and it was like holy crap this is totally something that he would want to eat he would love and I have no idea, don't ask me details about it. If you wanna see it, I'll maybe hold up the box later or I'll show you tomorrow in a short or something. But yeah, and I got some weird cheeses that I think he would like. Self-serve, oh, I've seen if the car wash was open. It is so freaking cold here, you guys. So we got this really crazy north wind that came in and it was a whole bunch of rain, whole bunch of storms, whole bunch of flooding. Then this wind started up and that's why the power is out down there. I have not heard from my husband that our power went out, but it is super, super gusty right now. Holy moly. I am so glad I spent extra time in Aldi, although I would have liked to get my bleach. I looked all over my house. I was looking through all my cupboards. I'm like, do I have one more bleach left, please? Please let me have one more. And I don't, I use the last one. But I am going to be going through all my bathroom cabinets, like decluttering and cleaning. Who knows, maybe there is one in there and I'm just not seeing it, which is what I'm hoping. But either way, yeah, it looks like uh, somehow I'm gonna have to make a, a trip. I, I won't have to go to Giant because, I'm going to this Wise Market right here. They have really good stuff here too, that they don't have at Aldi's. You know, Aldi's is all their weird Aldi stuff. And I need to get some normal stuff. <laughs> some regular normal stuff. <gasps> Green Jeep going by with a bunch of ducks. Ah! Uh, you probably didn't see it in the window or by really fast. But anyway, oh my God. Bright Green Jeep. Tons of ducks across the window. I was really hoping I would get ducked at Aldi but I think I'm there at the wrong time. I seem to only get ducked at Aldi when it is um, like Sunday morning. It seems to be the time that I get ducked at Aldi. Like when I go there on early on Sundays, that's when I seem to get it. <laughs> is this a parking place? Oh my God, yes it is. I'm gonna go right over here. Ta-da. And I'm gonna pull through so I can drive straight out. All right. I said I was going to talk about what happened in Michigan, and um, I really didn't other than we went there. So I was feeling crappy on Sunday night, and I was like, I don't have a good feeling about this. I went out to get some things at Major. I got some Michigan products that you can't buy out here to bring home for me and my hubby. So I got the Better Made potato chips because you got to get Better Maids when you're in Michigan. And I got him four cases of Verner's because he loves Verner's. I personally cannot stand burners. My mom forced me to drink it when I was sick, right? So I associate burners with having the flu. And I know several people have said this. I need to sip my coffee before I go in. A lot of people say that they have this, it's like that thing um, where you have a rubber band on your wrist and you're trying to quit smoking. Never that I, I never had to do that because I was never really a smoker other than clove cigarettes occasionally at a club or a bar. Um, Every time you want to smoke, you snap your wrist with a, or you pinch yourself or you do something. I mean, this was like old school, like before Nicorette and all that. Um, you do something to like make it be like a bad memory or a, a bad feeling every time you want to smoke. Okay, so that's what Verner's is for me. 
every time I was sick and I had the stomach flu, my mom was like, drink burners. And I'm like, mom, I don't want to drink burners. It's going to make my, make me puke. And she would go, no, it isn't just drink it. And then I would drink it and then I would puke. So now I associate drinking burners with feeling the worst I could possibly feel and puking there. End of story. But my husband loves it. He understands my feelings, but he loves it. So I always go to Myers and I get him enough burners to last until my next trip to Michigan to see my dad, which is usually about four, four small cases or two of the really big giant cases. Um, so I go out to the store and I had Coco with me, um, Jamie's dog, his pit bull, because I was taking her for a last ride before I went home the next day. And Coco is very old as well. We don't know how long she's going to be around, but I always take it as when I visit Miss Coco, it could be the last time I visit Miss Coco. So I took her out for a ride. We went to Myers, and she just sleeps in the car. Um, she's a giant old black pit bull and she sleeps back there and I have tinted windows. Nobody could see her. However, nobody will mess with Miss Coco because she's a giant angry black pit bull who is an only dog because she is, uh, she's an only dog. She should be an only dog. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I I get home. Um, okay, the sun went behind some clouds. Thank God. <clears throat> I mean, I like the sun, but blinded me here. So I'm coming back and I'm like, okay, well, I got to get, I should go get gas. I don't know, whatever. So I was doing this. I was kind of just doing a drive and I had cocoa with me and I hit the, all the groceries and stuff in the back. I also picked up some extra food for cocoa and a couple of Prezies to surprise my friend Jamie when he came home from his trip. I got him Easter candy. I put it on the counter. Crap, the sun's back again. It's a sign I should just go in and get this over with. And so I surprised him with some Easter candy. They had Mike and Ike's flavored peeps, marshmallow peeps on a stick. And they were all the colors of the Mike and Ike's. And they were flavored like the different Mike and Ike's. Peeps on a stick, Mike and Ike's flavored. Now, this is something you can only find in the Midwest, specifically in Metro Detroit, I bet. Because I live not but 45 minutes from where they make peeps in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Like I am literally, I live 45 minutes from the home of the peeps. Uh, what's it called? Uh, born something born, ever born, newborn, something born, just born. Uh, just born is the company that makes peeps and they are in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you knew that. Now you do. I live 45 minutes from there. But never, ever, never have I ever seen Mike and Ike flavored peeps on a stick here. So, but they have it at Myers in Metro Detroit. So there you go. Maybe they only have it at Mount Clemens. I don't know. Anyway, it's such a Midwestern thing. It cracked me up. So I had to buy it for Jamie because ever since I met him in the nineties, not the 1890s, you smart asses, the 1990s, um, ever since it was the 1790s. Okay. Now 1690s, let's just go all the way back. It was the 1690s and uh, I, there was an ad in the paper looking for a bass player. And that's, I don't know if I ever told you guys the story of how I met Jamie, but that's why. Oh, it's in our very first Sin and Tonic blog, I think. the very Either the first or the second one. We told the stories of how we all met. And Jamie had put an ad in the newspaper looking for a bass player in the Metro Times, which is a Metro Detroit free newspaper, enter entertainment newspaper. So yeah, I've known him that long and... We were roommates for like a decade of the 30 years, 30 plus years we've been besties and in a band together and roommates and all of the things. And he's always been obsessed with Mike and Ike's. So I was like, oh my God, peeps, Mike and Ike's have to get him these. So this is the kind of random crap I was buying at Myers before I was supposed to drive back to Michigan the next day. So then I started feeling like I really don't feel like I want to drive back. So I went crazy uh, when I was in the parking lot at Myers. I talked to my hubby. I was like, look, I don't really feel like driving back tomorrow. I just have a weird feeling. I don't think I should. And I don't know why. I said, I'm not ready to go yet. And I just don't think I should drive tomorrow. But I got this weird feeling. And I did look at the map and around Erie, um, where Interstate 80 and the Ohio Turnpike, where it goes near Erie, Lake Erie. It said uh, dangerous track, dangerous weather, winter storm warnings, high winds, possible snow, yada, yada, ice, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, that probably has a lot to do with why I don't want to drive through there tomorrow because we will be driving through that with how early I was going to have to leave to get home. Uh, because I didn't, hadn't planned anyone to check on my dogs and my hubby was going to work. So I have to leave Michigan usually about four in the morning to drive back. 
And I'm like, well, if we leave at four in the morning, we're going to be going through all that in the middle of the night in the dark when it's really horrible out. So I'm like, mm, yeah, no. But I just, I don't know. I just didn't have a good feeling. And I, so I left Myers and I ended up driving to my dad's. I texted him on the way and I said, I did my, you know, send a text. I didn't text while I was driving. Don't even. I have the uh, Uconnect. So I asked SIRI to send him a text for me. I didn't touch my phone. It was actually over there. Um, so I asked her to send him a message and I said, hey, I forgot something. I'm headed back to your house. Are you still up? And he texted back, of course I'm up. I don't go to bed this early. But yeah, I, I have to check. I never know. Sometimes he doesn't feel well. So um, I said, okay, I'm only about five minutes from your house. I'll be there in a few minutes. So I get to his place and I said, I forgot to take our picture together. So we had to do the picture of us. If I remember, I'll drop it in here. If I don't, I don't. I'll, it'll be on my Instagram or something. Um, but it's just a, uh, it's become a tradition to take a goofy selfie of me and my dad with my arm around him or kissing his cheek or something like that. It, and if I feel like if I don't do it, it's like bad luck. I'm supposed to go back again in May for like an entire week. I'm trying to go from Thursday to Wednesday this time. I would like to go from Thursday to Thursday, but it kind of depends on the dog sitting situation. If my friend can stop and watch my dogs and blah, 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 and all that. Or if my hubby can work from home that week, we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, beginning of May, I'll be going back. So I didn't want to jinx it and not take the picture with my dad. Cause I'm like, oh, if I don't take the picture, what if he's not there when I go back? That's how I think, you know, I have to, I, so I drove all the way back to my, all the way. It's like nine minutes. I drove back to my dad's, took the picture. So I sat with him for like an hour and it was the first time me and my dad just got to sit alone in that whole trip for an hour together. Maybe I'll talk about the Michigan trip and a get ready with me or something next week, but we were never, we never had time to just sit and hang out together, just the two of us. So just the two of us. So we just sat and hung out. Miss Coco was there. He was so happy. He gave her cheese. All was well in everyone's world. And I told him, I said, I just got this bad feeling about driving back tomorrow. And I felt bad because while I'm talking to him, I was on my phone like constantly because I was going between my friend Allie, who the one I farm sit for, and my husband, and then Allie some more, and then Jamie, and then um, my niece, Mads, who was at Jamie's house with Casper while I was at my dad's with Coco. Long story. It was a crazy trip, you guys. That's why I didn't, I did record two videos with Jeremy that he texted me this, or he called me this week and said, where's the videos? And I'm like, dude, how I told you the last two weeks have been crazy since I got back from there or a week and a half or whatever it is. Or how long has it been? It feels like two weeks since I got back. I don't know. I don't know if it's been a week or two weeks. Anyway, I think it's two weeks. God, I told them, I'm like, oh my God, I had groom clients booked every day when I got back. It was crazy. And then I was just dragging when I got back. I was so tired. Um, long story short, we did come back a day later. So I drove back on Tuesday. It turned out I get, I start, my phone starts blowing up Monday morning when I was supposed to be driving back, but I had arranged dog sitter. Everything was all set so I could stay until Tuesday morning. Well, eight in the morning, my phone all starts blowing up between seven thirty eight. My husband's like, Hey, it's me. Text Allie, change of plans. I'm working from home. Since three in the morning, we've had high winds. The power has gone off and on like 12 times or something. He's like, it will, it, and then it stays off. Then it comes back on. He's like, I don't want to leave the house in the dark and the dogs and everyone here. If the power goes off, they're going to freak out because we usually have music on for them in the background and all that. And so he's like, and the, and plus, you know, the fridge and the freezer, if it doesn't come back on and he's gone all day. And then he's like, I don't want Allie coming over here and the power's out and she can't use the toilets because we have a well we have well water, so when our power goes out, our well doesn't work, so none of our water works. We're trying to remedy that this year and get a generator so that when the power goes out, the generator will kick everything on and we'll let, we, all we care about is having water, everything else, whatever, but it sucks that we have no water when our well goes off. That really, I mean, when the power goes out, so that sucks. So he's like, can you text her because you don't have to ever come over now because our power keeps going on and off. So I text Allie and she goes, oh my God, our power keeps going on and off. Joe woke up at three in the morning and thought a train was driving through our house because the wind was so loud. So there was this crazy wind all around my area and all through Pennsylvania. I looked, um, it was happening at my niece and my niece is almost like two and a half hours um, west of me 
on Interstate 80. She's in like State College area. So I would have had to drive through high winds in a Jeep. If you know, you know, it's a it's terrible trying to keep these things on the freeway. And what scares me more is the semis getting hit by the high wind gusts and blowing into you, which is horrifying. I mean, I don't like driving around semis anyway. It's not fun. I usually just stay in the right lane. I'm like, just leave me alone. Go around me. I don't care. Leave me alone. Um, but since I had my puppy in the car, I had Casper and my niece, I text my husband. I go, well, yeah, I have precious cargo. Uh, Mads is engaged. I cannot have Mads <laughs> have anything happen to Mads. First of all, it would devastate my brother and his family. It would devastate me and her partner, Kara, and all of her pets. And if something happened to me, every I mean, the, me and Mads being in a car accident, let's just say the family would like lose the damn minds. And also Casper is with us. So I'm like, I am not taking any unnecessary risks driving home. And unless it's a gorgeous, perfect day, I'm not driving home. I don't care. And both of us luckily are in the situation where I didn't have any clients booked. I, my client that was booked that day rescheduled. And that I took that as a sign too. I did have clients booked on Tuesday, but they had rescheduled. And I'm like, this is a sign. I should just, I can stay now extra day or two. So it turns out Allison's power ended up going out and was out for like 12 hours. Our power went out off and on all day long. My husband said it was terrible. There were trees down everywhere. So he's like, well, it's a good thing you didn't drive back. There's trees down everywhere. It's a mess. So I'm like, well, this is cool. We'll drive back the next day. Everything will have blown through. And that front that went through, it went through and then behind it, it was lovely. We had the greatest, easiest drive home on Tuesday. I was tired, but there were no problems. Plus, I Jamie came home on the red eye on Monday morning. So I got to hang out with Jamie. We went to breakfast on Monday morning which I never usually get to do with him. We went to breakfast and then I got to see him that evening. He went to fill up my gas tank for my Jeep before I left. We went on Monday night and did that. So I'd be ready to leave on Tuesday morning. So I got to see my bestie. So it was all good. I was going to leave him surprises on the counter, but I was like, well, you're here. So surprise. He, and of course he goes, oh my God, Mike and Ike peeps on a stick. I'm like, I know, right? It all worked out like perfectly. And, uh, Allie might not be watching this, but thank you to my friend Allie for stepping up at the very last minute. I mean, I was texting her at like 8.39 at night on Sunday night going, can you, you go to my house tomorrow and check out my dogs? And my husband, you know, was going to leave her mo left money for her and everything. He's like, there'll be money on the counter, blah, blah, blah. Anywho, I didn't have to drive home in that mess. So then my niece and I are driving back and we're on Interstate 80 and there was so much snow on the sides of the road and everything. And it was crazy because I'm like, there was no snow when we drove out. And that all that snow all happened on Monday when I said, I don't want to drive in this. So I, my dad, so funny, my dad and my friend Jamie, when I said, I don't feel like I should drive back tomorrow. They both said word for word, you need to trust your gut. If your gut tells you not to drive, don't drive. I mean, if you can, I understand like if you're like, you have plane tickets and you know, you're Regina Phalange and you're like, something's wrong with the plane's right phalange. If you know, you know, friends, people, uh, something's wrong with the right phalange. You got off the plane. Um, I'm doing bad friends quotes right now. I don't care. It's that was funny. I'm sorry. It was funny getting Rachel off the plane by telling her something was wrong with it. And that see, Phoebe had a psychic feeling that something was wrong with it. But, you know, I understand if you have to go to work the next day, if some, you can't like every weird little feeling, you can't be like, oh, I can't go. It just so happened I had a bad feeling. Also, the weather was weird and everything fell into place. And I even said, look, if I wake up Monday morning and the feeling is gone and I feel like, yeah, I should drive home, everything is fine, then we'll go. But I was, then I woke up to all these messages going, thank God you didn't drive home today. I'm like, ah, I was right. And this is how you trust your instincts. So anyway, um, I'm going to go get into this wise market because this was 20 minutes of blah, blah, blah. And when I come out, I have to drive home and I will tell you what happened once I got home. Because then it was like craziness. And it's not, a, it's not a lot to talk about. It's, I'll give you the, the Cliff Notes version in case you don't want to watch the rest of it. But watch the rest of it because why not? Um, I got home. I worked a lot. I groomed a lot of dogs. I ran myself into the ground and then I got sick. And ever since I got home from that trip, I was like feeling like I was fighting a cold, but our weather keeps going really warm, really cold, really warm, really cold. 
And I know that's why I got sick. It's like annoying. I hate it. It needs to make up its mind. Okay, I'm going in now. Uh, I will be back and we'll talk about everything after. Okay. Oh my God. Okay, so this is Cuckoo. It is now getting dark. I am trying to rush home because I have to get my chickens in no number available before it gets, connect phone button. gets too dark and my thing's talking to me again. Holy crap. So, okay, I go in Wise and I always forget how much I freaking love this store. So, oops, I gotta turn the music down so I don't get copyright strike. Um, even though I want to jam this music right now. So, I go to Wise and I'm watching. I can't look at you people because I am uh, trying to get out of here and it's crazy. So I go in, right? Sunny. Remember that? Remember that sun? Remember I was like, ooh, and it, everything calmed down. I said, I think everything blew through. Literally going wise. Go, oh, the bright red on my face is from the brake lights in front of me. <laughs> it got kind of dark. <laughs> Holy crap. They had so many cool things. Wait, I'm at a light. So let me see if I can show you this. So my hubby is not feeling well. And, you know, it's kind of weird to get a guy flowers, but he's obsessed with ducks. So look what I got him. It's a duckulant. No, it's a duck ear plant. And it's adorable. And I love it. It's so cute. And I think he's going to love it. Anyway, he is going to get this before I upload this video. But how cute is this? And I'm driving. So let's put the duck back. I also bought him... I was going to get like some flowers or something. I'm like, no, that's weird. I can't get him flowers. He'd be like, those are for you, aren't they? He'd be like, you bought flowers for you. They're for me, but they're really for you to look at. And I'll be like, yeah, accurate. Um, so I got him an English ivy plant because he loves English ivy. And they had, I can't show it to you because I'm driving, but I got him the cutest little English ivy. He's going to love it. I got him so much food that... This store is like his store. I'm telling you, if he could open his own grocery store, it would be this Wise Market. And in case you're wondering what Wise is, W-E-I-S. And it had another, oh, Mr. Z's. It used to be Mr. Z's. And when I moved here, everybody said, oh, you mean Mr. Z's. I'm like, well, now it's Wise. But there are people like my friend Allie, who I think still call it Mr. Z's. But it's actually Wise Market. It's very weird going by Pocono Candle. Don't know if you knew this, but Poconos is known for their handmade candles. Like it's back since like the eighties, people would come here like it was a huge honeymoon destination way back when. And I know because my brother Jim came to the Poconos for his honeymoon with his wife, Kathy. And it was like a huge thing. And it's so weird to think way back in the eighties, Jim and Kathy came here for a honeymoon. And now I live here for the last 14 years. And I probably, all the places they went, I think, I'm pretty sure he said they went to the falls. They went to Bushkill Falls. It's not far from my house and I've hiked there many times. Uh, I get to get him for free because I'm a 183, I'm a 183 zip code. If you're a 183 zip code, there's like 01, 02, 03, whatever. There's different endings. But if you're any of those, I guess allegedly, you know, if you have a 183, they kind of don't really advertise it but you're a local, you can tell them and you don't have to pay the exorbitant tourist rate to get in and you can just go hike there because a lot of people local just like to go there and hike, I guess. I need to go do that again in the spring. So, oh my God, I forget how much good produce this Wise also has. They had these mixes. They had a teriyaki vegetable mix. So I got a teriyaki... I think I'm out of teriyaki sauce. Son of a bee. I have hoisin, but I don't think I have any teriyaki left. Are you kidding me? Um, anyway, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud. I know, you know, I bought a bunch of stuff to make for the week and to food prep probably tomorrow. Tomorrow will probably be mega food prep day. And I started to get things to make stuff. And then I know I forgot some things. But the good thing is I got lots of healthy food. I stayed away I did the thing, I don't know if you knew this, this is a very good way to do it if you're trying to lose weight. It's a thing called shop the perimeter. And basically you go around the outside of the store because when you go through the inside lanes, it's all preserved, you know, preserved food. It's all like um, 
processed, not preserved. Um, it's all the processed food stuffs that isn't really food. It's like stuff in boxes that's like prepared food and processed food is all in the middle. So if you stick around the perimeter, you're with all the whole foods. You're in the vegetables, you're in the breads, you're in the cheeses and dairy. If you do cheese and dairy, um, if you're a vegetarian, which we pretty much are. Um, I don't do milk, but I'll have some cheese. I love me some good cheese. I actually got a creamy gorgonzola and I bought a whole bunch of pears. Oh, the ice cream place is open. It's, oh, so anyway, let's see what the temperature is now. So I was gonna, oops, I just clicked my VR thing. There we go. All right, so I feel so, I don't feel bad for them because they are so busy. There are people standing in line in insanely insane wind and it's gonna be super cold tonight. There's people standing in line getting ice cream. I love our community sometimes. Times like this, that's freaking awesome. Okay, so it is, why can I not find my, sorry, I'm trying to find my, Where is it? Oh, it is 35 degrees right now, but it does not feel like 35. We're having a really cold, like, north wind. Oh, you know what? Let me switch my thing. It says more light required. Hold on. Oh, that's actually worse. <laughs> I'm driving home in the dark. Oh, lordy. Okay, so I'll be home in probably about nine or ten minutes. Oh, turn your lights on, dude. I swear I see more people, I'm really like watching because I see more people driving and pulling out and they don't have lights on yet. I have the automatic lights, so if it's rainy or it's even a little overcast or doing anything weird. <clears throat> so, okay, I had like the whole crazy like meltdown, like, oh my God, Sally's and everything is closed. I was gonna go stop at our favorite Chinese place and I'm sorry it's dark, but nothing I can do about it, guys getting dark really fast. I got to get up the mountain and get my chickens inside because it's getting very cold, very windy, and I want nothing to eat them. So hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, I had to stop this for a minute. So I'm sorry it's very dark right now. <laughs> We've been driving around for a while. This is going to be a very long vlog for me to upload. So, oh my God. Um, I was going to totally go to the place that totally go to what am I the god belly girl I was like gonna totally go to the sushi place okay because we love sushi okay personally I like there's a sushi I love there and it's um it's avocado and cucumber it and that's basically all it is it's like an avocado cucumber and something and it doesn't have anything else in it it's just like a veggie sushi let me tell you that avocado cucumber sushi with the white rice and the nori, so good. So, so good. Okay, so right now I need to really watch. I am actually going under the speed limit. No one's behind me because I need to also watch for deer right now. Joy. I got the cutest stuff at the Wise Market, though. I got Casper, a dog toy. God, I so want to show you guys everything. I almost feel like I should continue this in the light when I'm unpacking, but it's so much stuff that would have to be like another video. But they had Peeps dog toys. But I was talking about peep stuff. So they had this whole thing of Peeps dog and cat toys. And Casper is obsessed with rope toys, in case you're wondering. In case you want to send him a one-year birthday present on July 22nd, which is his one-year birthday. Um, put it on your calendar. July 22nd. Casper. One-year birthday. This year. He'll be one year old on July 22nd. Uh, but, okay, why is this coffee giving me hiccups and burps? Ooh. So they had these uh, dog and cat toys, and the last thing Casper needs is more toys. Holy crap, now it's like really dark. Sorry, you're just listening to me talk in the dark. Don't know what to tell you. Listen to the lilting sound of my voice <clears throat> as I'm losing my voice. Oh, so before when I go turn up my road I'll tell you what happened after I get back from Michigan so I got him it's a rope toy and it's a circle and it's a rope and it's got a peeps chick on it and it's blue the so it's like boy you know because <laughs> he's my little boy so I got him that and I got the cutest thing for myself I got my dad a pop-up Easter cart which is adorable and 
the pop-up Easter card for my dad is dogs. It's It's got a poodle and like a sheep dog. It has all, it's just called Easter dogs and it has all these dogs on it and it pops up. There's nothing that's more me to send my dad than dogs because I'm always taking dogs to visit my dad. Sadly, I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but my the dog that I helped my dad find to rescue, her name was Sadie. He adopted Sadie and they had her for a while and then Sadie passed away the same year, like within months of my mom passing away. I have never been more mad at a dog. I was like, Sadie, what the hell are you doing to me, girl? I mean, my dad needed that companionship and everything. And um, Sadie passed away, like, right after my mom. It was horrible. And then my dad was just, you know, he's kind of like, he doesn't, he would like to have another dog or something as a companion, but he's like, he can't because he, he just, honestly, he just can't take care of a dog. I mean, he, the energy, you know, he would need... Do you hear this wind? Wait. The wind is freaking insane right now. I just want to get home in case a tree comes down on my road. Um, oh, I was saying, so I came out of the wise after all the shopping. I don't know what happened. A huge, scary storm front has come in. I think what I thought was where it was all dark on the one side and the sun was on the other side. I thought where it was all dark east of us, I thought that had blown away. No, that was coming in. So that's what we have now. So we have this very scary, super high wind right now. The lights are on so far up my road. Everybody's lights are on. Unless they all have generators, because a lot of people do, but I doubt it. It's like all of them are on. Yeah, everybody's got lights on. Okay. God, I hope we don't lose power tonight. If this vlog doesn't get up anytime soon, just know it's because our power went out. I don't know what to say about that. I'm charging my phone in the car right now. And I do have emergency little um, anchor travel batteries. I have those. So I don't have to worry about my phone too much. I got several of those. But yeah, the wind is freaking crazy. I come out of Wise and it's giant wind gusts and it's cold. And I don't know how it says it was like 35 because I'm like, it is not freaking 35. This thing's out of its mind. My car is saying 35, but um, with the with the wind, it's kind of like a northeast wind coming in. Okay, now it's down to 33 because I have the I have the thing on my car that gets the temperature. I don't know how accurate it is, but it says 33. But I know that tonight it's supposed to go down in like the 20s again, which sucks. Everything is freezing, and then it rained all day. So it rained all day. Now everything's gonna freeze. Um, so that's that about that. But I'm trying to slowly, I'm only going like 31 up my road and I'm taking my time because it's very windy. My Jeep's blowing around. It's dark. It's not as dark as it looks on camera, guys. It looks really dark on camera, but it's not that dark outside yet. I mean, I can still see. If I didn't have my headlights on, I could still see, but I definitely want my headlights on. And I am definitely watching for deer, so... I'm glad you can't see me because I can't look at the camera. Not that I do a lot anyway when I'm driving around here and especially not in the dark. Holy crap. But, um, let's see. Dad, dog. Yeah, so he lost Sadie and that really sucked. And he had a good point. He said, you know, he, he was like, I don't want to get a dog because I know the dog will outlive me. You know, and he's not being morbid. I mean, he's 94 and he just doesn't have a lot of energy. And he can't change, he's, he's, um, he has mobility issues because of his knees and his joints, his joints, mostly his knees are just so painful. He's like bone on bone now with a lot of his, his knees and everything. So he's very sore. He has a walker. He can't chase a dog around, which is really sad, but he does love when dogs come to visit him, which is why when he asked me to bring Casper, I was like, absolutely. So I took Casper to Michigan. My dad loved him, but my dad was like, boy, he has a lot of energy. I said, yeah, he's a puppy. That's what puppies are like. I mean, we forget because me and my hubby haven't had a puppy in like eight years now. Lydia was the last one and Lydia was the most low key mellow puppy I've ever seen. So really the last real puppy that was an Iggy puppy was in 2001, March, 2001. I had to do my yawn. My ears popped again. Um, March, 2001, when we got Velocity. Wow. See how I circled back to that? Um, what else did I say? Oh, so I got back from Michigan though. Trip went great. Casper was an angel. Casper, for an eight-month-old puppy, could not have been better behaved. He met 
my my uh, great niece Josie, and I put a picture on my Instagram or his Instagram. I can't one of ours. It was really cute. He was so sweet. He's Casper loves tiny humans. He loves kids. I don't know why. He's never met kids. Never been around kids, but loves them. I think it's because he's deaf. He's just very sensitive. He was really good with my dad. He was amazing in the car the whole drive. He never had accidents. Like, I think he had one, and it was only because it was the first time that Mads stayed at Jamie's, and I went out without them. I went to dinner with Jeremy on Friday night, a day after we got there, and he had an accident in Jamie's kitchen. Just made a little poop. He made a little poop, and that was mostly he didn't know where to go. You know, it's his first time in that house. Wow, it is. Hi, I'm still here. Pitch black now. Um, anyway, I get back from Michigan. Everything is great, but... I took a day off. I just completely chilled. I relaxed. And then I just could not get any energy. And I've been fighting a cold ever since I got back from Michigan. And I had groom clients. I was really busy, booked with groom clients and all that, doing all that stuff. And then, um, oops, okay, people with their brights, look at this, blinding me to death they are. Dude with the brights, for real though. Okay, so I'm gonna just drive my Jeep right into my backyard because I have to put my chickens in. And my headlights make for great uh, getting the chickens in lights so I can see what I'm doing. So now it's gonna be pitch black because I'm on my property and it is very dark. Oh, there's the porch lights just hit my face. Holy crap, it's so windy. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh-oh, did the door blow closed? Oh, I think my husband put the chick. He did not come out and put the chickens in. He did not. He did. My hubby came out and put the chickens in. Oh, he's the best, you guys. So I get back and I had to work so much. I was just working nonstop, grooming dogs, grooming dogs, because I was gone like a week, catching up with everybody. And then, um, so I, and I had been fighting a cold this whole time. So that was the, the first few days I was back. And then um, Hubby and I just took it really easy. And we spent like last weekend together because that was my first weekend back was last weekend. So then this weekend, I, uh, oh, I got to back in here. So this week I was grooming dogs again. I was very, very booked. And luckily two of my days, two of the four days I was supposed to groom dogs all week they rescheduled for the next two weeks. So it really broke up all my appointments, which was awesome. It was also a really good thing because after I spent those two days grooming all day, I wasn't even done until like, hold on, put my little light on here. Wasn't done until like six o'clock at night the one night. And my husband's like, oh my God, you're still working. I'm like, yes, yes, I am. Uh, it was so late. It was crazy. Um, get, oh, here, I'll show you my stuff really quick, but I have to go in. So I got my dad this little card. See, it's got, oh, it's really hard to see, but there's little pop-up doggies on it. I wonder if I, there we go. It, look, little pop-up dogs. How cute is this? And little baby chicks. It's so me. Okay, and then look what I got myself. It is a Peeps cotton candy um, marshmallow cream lip balm. And it goes on your keychain and the lip balm pops in the back of the Peep. So this is going on my keychain. And... This is what I got for Casper, and I gotta start unloading, but look at Casper's peep. So he's got a big fat peep chick on a rope, and I'm making Casper his first Easter basket, so I'm very excited. Anyway, uh, that's that. Um, so I get home, I, you know, groom dogs, took it, e took it easy, and then I, this week I was really busy again grooming dogs. Luckily, like Wednesday and Thursday rescheduled and thank God they did because by like, I worked until Tuesday night, like six o'clock at night. And keep in mind, I was up at like six or eight, no, seven in the morning and doing stuff nonstop until my groom dogs got here. And then I was grooming all day and I finished, uh, she picked them up at like five after six on Tuesday. And Monday was just as bad. I worked very, like, it was just really long, long days. And I was not moving fast. Um, I'm gonna turn this there, turn that off. Um, so then long story short, too late. I was sick the last few days, like Tuesday or Wednesday, Tuesday when I was done, I felt like crap. Then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I was in bed all three days. 
Today, Saturday, is the first day that I feel good, but my throat is still sore. And now my husband is two days behind me. He has the exact same thing I had. And he is sick right now. So that's why I brought him some stuff. Oh, I'll show you his little IV I bought him just because just it's cute. Hold on. So instead of buying him flowers, I got him this little IV. I could put it in his office window and it's really cute. I might put it in his office window. I might put it in the sunroom. But he loves IV, so I got him this. And I got him lots of stuff. So he's probably hungry. I'm going to go in and unpack. But thank you for watching and uh, this big, long update. But I'm feeling better now. And I really want to catch up on my makeup stuff that I have not done. I never did a first day of spring because I'm still not inspired to do it because it's freezing cold out. And I'm going to get this stuff unpacked. And I swear to God, if I bought all this stuff and our power goes out, I'm going to be pissed. It's going out on my deck where it's freezing cold. Anyway, I'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I can get back on a schedule. I mean, the last, oh, last month is crazy. I can't believe it's going to be April soon. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.